Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 6, it's election day. If you haven't voted, don't let the rain stop you from doing so. Just ahead on GMSA, who's on the ballot and where you can vote. Plus, the United States hit a major milestone in the fight against the coronavirus, where we now stand as far as vaccinations and what's next for Americans. And it has been a busy few days when it comes to the weather. Taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 66 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for what we can expect going forward. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Saturday, May 1st. Happy May. Happy May. Happy Election Day. Also, very happy about this much needed rain, mm. Sarah. I mean, I, it, it, at one point, it got a little dicey yesterday, it but is. we need this. Yeah, we, ab we absolutely need the rain. We absolutely need the rain. And in fact, this is a look at live radar right now. Live radar. We're Seeing a good amount of rain still in the area. Now, one thing I want to show you is some video from last night. Uh, this, again, is uh, some flooding there in the creek. You can see just how much these uh, rivers and creeks have needed uh, this rainfall. This is rainfall near Vance Jackson and Callahan. Of course, uh, this is the risk we run when we get a lot of good soaking rain in the area. It can lead to flash flooding, especially since it was a while since we had seen good soaking rain like this. You get the debris caught in some of the gutters and it prevents the proper drainage. And so today we're going to be monitoring for the risk for some severe, uh, pardon me, some some flooding in the area. Let's go ahead and zoom into Bear County right now. And you can see right near the airport, that's where the official sensor is currently getting a good downpour. Now we're not entirely worried too much about the kind of rain that's falling across the county right now because it is moving and that's the key. The rain is moving. If we had some uh, stagnant rainfall in places, then we'd be really worried worried about a continuation of some flash flooding like we had yesterday. Now in Medina County, just to the north of Hondo, you can see a good healthy uh, shower there working its way to Medina Lake at the moment. And then another thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and switch over to the radar that's closer to uh, Del Rio and we'll actually see that there are some good healthy thunderstorms out toward Del Rio right now and even in Maverick County. So putting a pause on this because this is obviously the strongest storm that we've got in the area right now. It's just that Del Rio has not seen as much rain as we have in San Antonio, so not really worried about flooding near Del Rio and in Valverde County at the moment. Again, just some good healthy rain there uh, in, in those areas. So just a reminder today, we're going to continue to see passing areas of heavy rainfall, and because of that, the flash flood watch is in effect until 7 p.m. today, where we're going to be continuing to watch out for the possibility for flash flooding, like what we had last night, with an additional one to two inches of rain possible. So here's how the day shakes out. 80% chance for some rain and some storms that will taper off in the afternoon hours. So if you are planning to vote today, just take that umbrella with you, pack your patience. I'll continue to keep you updated and we'll have a look at the radar more in depth and rainfall totals so far coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. On top of the weather, we are also tracking the polls. It is election day, and we do expect to see some competitive matchups on the ballot. Well, more than 80 candidates are running for 11 seats that include for mayor and all city council seats. Our Alicia Barretta joins us live in the newsroom with who's on the ballot and where you can vote today. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, a lot of people have their eyes on who will be the next mayor of San Antonio. So let's start with that 2019 rematch. Really, those top two names, uh, the two front runners are Mayor Ron Nirenberg and former city councilman Grog Brockhouse. Brockhouse is a conservative and says he's an underdog. It could be a close race again as it was in 2019. Nirenberg secured his second term by a runoff by nearly 2,000 votes. But there are other candidates on the ballot as well running for mayor. That's Jay Miller, Justin Macaluso, Gary Allen, Frank Adam Muñiz, Antonio Tony Diaz, Michael Commander Hidrago, John M. Velasquez, Dan Martinez, Denise Gutierrez Homer, Homer, 
Ray Basaldua, Joshua, James Galvan, and Tim Atwood. All these names, all the information on KSAT.com. But depending on where you live, you may be voting in city, school district, water district, or special elections. But exactly where can you vote? Know that you do not have to vote in your neighborhood or your district. You can vote at any of the more than 240 voting centers in Bear County. Those will be open today from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So some things to note. You do have to be 18 years old. Do not forget your ID. Uh, you probably want to have your voter registration card handy, too. That will also get you a free ride to the polls. Max, Sarah, back to you. All right, Alicia, thank you so much. We're going to be following all this throughout the morning, and we also will be continuing our election coverage right here on KSAT at 7 p.m. with a live stream. Our Steve Spreeser will be joined by a panel of experts discussing what is on the ballot, analyzing the results live as they come in, and you can watch on our website, KSAT TV streaming app, and of course, on KSAT's Facebook page. And to see our past coverage leading up to Election Day, along with the sample ballot, just search KSAT.com slash vote. Well, now to the latest involving the coronavirus vaccine rollout in our area. Metro Health is now offering even more opportunities for you to get the vaccine if you're still waiting for one and no appointments are needed. Monday, May 3rd, you can get a Pfizer vaccine at the New Life Christian Center off U.S. Highway 90 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or St. Henry Catholic Church off South Flores Street is offering the one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Once again, you can just show up. No appointment is needed. All right, taking a look at the latest COVID numbers right here at home. The last report shows 267 new cases of COVID. No new deaths in the last 24 hours. As for our hospitalization rate, 230 people in the hospital, 69 of them in the ICU, 44 on ventilators. But important to mention, so far more than 768,000 people have received at least one vaccine dose. And get this. More than 524,000 people in our area are fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, the United States reaching a major milestone when it comes to vaccines. 100 million Americans now fully vaccinated. That's nearly 40% of all U.S. adults. The White House also announcing travel restrictions to the COVID ravaged India. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. The U.S. announcing a new travel ban on most non-U.S. citizens coming from India starting Tuesday. The White House citing extraordinarily high COVID-19 caseloads and multiple variants circulating in India. The virus crippling India's health care system, killing 3,500 people in just 24 hours. What's your own sense of that for people who have family and loved ones there? People are worried. No question. People are worried. Here at home, health officials in Michigan and Tennessee identifying two cases of a variant now spreading quickly in India. One person had recently returned from a trip there. Meantime, a milestone in the U.S. 100 million Americans now fully vaccinated. More than 20 states now reporting a decline in new COVID-19 cases over the past week. I think we can confidently say the worst is behind us, barring some crazy, unforeseen variant. In hard-hit Michigan, infections are dropping, and New York City, once the epicenter of the pandemic, will open at 100 percent capacity July 1st, including bars, restaurants, stores, and stadiums, though Broadway will wait until September. But in other parts of the country, like the Pacific Northwest, COVID infections and hospitalizations are on the rise, especially among younger people who have yet to be vaccinated. Get vaccinated because we're we may have a good summer, but we may start seeing the virus start to surge again in our populations as cold weather comes and we want to have everybody vaccinated by then. Meantime, some restrictions remain. The TSA says the mandate requiring travelers to wear a face covering on planes, trains and buses will be extended to September 13th. People who are fully vaccinated also included. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And time now is 6.09, 66 degrees out. Well, just ahead, finding out how one local cheesecake shop came up with its name and unique recipes. That's in today's Texas Eats. And how often do you clean your car? According to your new study, if it's been a while, you are not alone. Sarah Costa. It's this been a while. <laughs> story is literally aimed at you. Still ahead, how many Americans say their cars are full of junk and haven't been washed in months. 
Taking a look outside with live cam. There it is. There's that rain that we've been experiencing over the last two days. Now Sarah Spivey will give us an update in just a bit. All right, but first a new study finds Americans started their spring cleaning a little bit early this year. That's because a third of drivers say their cars are so full of junk. There's no room for anyone to sit except for them. The one poll survey found 31% of vehicles are completely overwhelmed with random stuff. 19% say they haven't cleaned their car in the past three months, while 35% of drivers don't know how often they should have their car washed. Meanwhile, over half say they've spilled a drink on the floor of the seats. In addition to messy cars, nearly 40% have had major modifications to make the vehicle safer. The most popular improvement is tire jacks. All right, so. I know that you haven't gotten a car wash in a while, but it looks like we should hold off for at least a little I bit. I know, and it, it, I mean, the rain kind of cleans it, right, Sarah? Oh, well, yeah, but it also makes it muddy. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I would hold off on the car wash until tomorrow. Tomorrow will actually be a pretty nice day, but today we're going to be monitoring for flash flooding throughout the day. And here's the reason why. This is a look at measured rainfall so far. We're going to add on to these totals, but look at the airport. Since Wednesday, when we had that big storm move on through, we've seen more than five inches of rain at the airport. Five and three quarters up near the Stone Oak area. More than six inches of rain near Leon Valley. Up to five inches in St. Hedwig and up to four and a half inches out in Seguin. So the ground is totally saturated. So any kind of heavy rain that just sits over one place may lead to some flash flooding. So let's go ahead and take a look at the current radar right now. Not too much rain in the area, but we are seeing some shower activity across parts of uh, northeastern Bear County, pushing into Comal County. Seguin seeing some good rain at the moment. We'll go ahead and take a neighborhood view here uh, by looking at, uh, let's say, the Hollywood Park area, San Antonio International Airport, Windcrest. This is just some moderate rain gradually pushing up to the north toward Live Oak and JBSA Randolph. Again, as I mentioned, out near Shirts, seeing some good rainfall there and out near Seguin, too. We've also got an isolated shower down near China Grove uh, on the east side of town. Again, this is an area that saw a good amount of rain yesterday after missing out on a lot of the rain on Wednesday. Let's go ahead and take a look off to the east uh, out toward Medina County. Of course, we know that there was a confirmed EF1 tornado just to the south of Hondo from Wednesday night storms. No severe weather out there right now. But again, just some good rain out near Rio Medina, Castroville, and near Medina Lake itself and into uh, Bandera County and, in fact, out in Kendall County, where there hasn't been a ton of rain over the last couple of days, uh, seeing some good rainfall there near the Comfort area. One thing I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and take a look off to the east, uh, pardon me, off to the west, where we're actually seeing some pretty strong storms uh, out near Del Rio right now, uh, zooming into Valverde County and the Kenny County line there. Anywhere you see these purples, there might be some uh, small pea-sized hail as this is moving to the north and to the east, uh, but no severe weather out there just yet. Again, these areas need the rain, and it really hasn't rained too much uh, down south toward uh, Kenny County, uh, pardon me, down south toward Maverick County, just to the west of Crystal City. We've got a good storm there with a few flashes of lightning. That's what those little uh, lines are there as we zoom in. So again, a, a little bit of rain going on right now near Bear County, uh, but not a ton, which is good uh, because, again, once we get a lot of that heavier rain, we're probably going to run into some more flash flooding issues, and that's why there is a flash flood watch in effect until 7 p.m. Out near Hallettsville in Lavaca County, there is a flash flood warning until 7 o'clock this morning, so just for the next 45 minutes or so. But again, notice how much rain is still out to the west. This is all around this upper level low pressure system, which has brought us the rain. It's going to continue to push to the east today. And through the morning hours, the heaviest rain is going to be west of San Antonio, like what we're seeing down near Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs. But as we head into the early afternoon, we'll get another round of showers and storms. So we're going to have ongoing rounds of showers and storms through uh, the day here. It's the early afternoon hours that I'm going to be monitoring for some severe weather pockets of maybe up to quarter size hail, but that's 
fairly unlikely. The big concern today is the areas of flash flooding possible. Uh, as we head into the evening hours, we're going to see rain push to the east. It's going to become a lot less frequent. So I would say go to the polls early this morning and go to the polls later on in the afternoon, later afternoon hours, right before they close, uh, just if you want to avoid a lot of the rain. Uh, again, flash flood watch is in effect until 7 p.m. today for an additional one to two inches of rain that could lead to flash flooding pockets of up to six are possible in these counties in green. Today we'll be hovering in the uh, 60s and low 70s again in the evening hours seeing those rain chances come to an end. We will salvage some of our weekend. Tomorrow's going to be a nice day starting off with some fog but gradually clearing seeing sunshine in the afternoon warm on Monday in the 90s before a weak front moves through giving us a small chance for rain. But this is this is our good soaking rain that we need for the Edwards Aquifer and for drought relief, guys. Yeah, just sit on the couch, get cozy, enjoy the rain on Saturday. All right, Sarah Spiver, thank you so much. 618, 66 degrees out. Well, just ahead, a new campaign to get Americans to stop smoking cigarettes. What the FDA is trying to do to prevent more deaths from happening. And coming up next, David Elder taking us inside a unique cheesecake shop. We learn where they came up with the names and some of the fun recipes. us now to talk a little bit more about the history of the bake shop out here is Victor Charisma and you're going to be talking to us about the name of the cheesecake spot which is Laika. Yeah. So who's Laika and why name the shop after? So Laika was the first uh, creature from Earth uh, to orbit the Earth in a space. Uh, it was a dog from Moscow. Uh, before we send human to space, uh, we had to send animals first to, to see how, how it affects. Unfortunately, the human that's just how it goes. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, but uh, it is a piece of uh, history of, of Eastern Europe, and that's where we're from. So we wanted to incorporate a little bit of it into our store too. Uh, for people who need an option like a sugar-free or low-sugar, do you have an option for them? We actually, you're right in time because we just uh, wanted to announce it today that we started making the sugar-free and gluten-free desserts too. Wow. So right now on the display you can see the sugar-free New York with the raspberry topping, with the raspberry sugar-free jam on top. And thank you so much for showing us, but now, I mean, it is finally time. We've seen them all. It's time to eat. Yay. And I'm super, yes, we're going to eat some cheesecake. We've actually tried this place. Yeah. It's, Delicious. It's addicted. All addictive, right. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 623, 66 degrees out. Well, the FDA says it's moving to ban menthol in cigarettes and all flavored cigars. After mm. the break, how the agency says it's promoting better health equity. Good morning and welcome back. It is an effort that U.S. health officials say will save hundreds of thousands of lives. The FDA making a move to ban menthol in cigarettes and ban all flavored cigars. CNN's Mandy Gay there has the latest in today's Health Minute. It's the first step in a long road. For far too long, certain populations have been targeted and disproportionately impacted by tobacco use. The FDA says it's moving to ban menthol in cigarettes and all flavored cigars in an effort to not only save lives, but promote better health equity. Campaigns to get Americans to stop smoking, which is the leading cause of preventable death in the country, haven't been universally successful. In the United States, compared to non-Hispanic white smokers, significantly fewer black smokers report long-term quitting and black smokers are more likely to die of tobacco-related disease than white smokers. Studies have shown menthol makes smoking more appealing. The FDA says banning it would help prevent young people and new users from picking up the habit. Cigarettes are the only legal consumer product that, when use is intended, will kill about half of all users prematurely. The FDA hopes to have the ban in place in a year, saying it can't happen immediately because the proposed change needs to go through a legal public comment period. But here we are um, announcing an important uh, action um, that will go a long way to addressing some of the most significant health inequities that exist. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither.
All right, time now is 628, 66 degrees out. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, making sure you have a ride to the poll today. What VIA says you need to bring with you to get a free bus ride. Plus, Hollywood Park police working to stop catalytic converters from being stolen after a suspected thief was caught right in the act. Details on this new program that will be free to businesses. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday 631 this morning and the last 48 hours have been a whirlwind of weather. It's been so different from what we've been used to the last couple of months and Sarah Spivey much needed rain. Much needed rain indeed. In fact, uh, we've seen more rain in the last couple of days. Uh, so much rain that we're actually where we should be at now this time of year with rainfall. So we've seen more than five inches of rain at the airport since Wednesday. But it does come at a cost, and that cost is that there is the possibility for more flash flooding today. We'll keep an eye on things, but the rain that's ongoing around San Antonio right now, it's light enough and it's moving fast enough that it's probably not going to cause any flash flooding at the moment. But we still do have that flash flood watch in effect until 7 p.m. tonight. Some good rain out near Seguin and out near New Braunfels, which desperately needs the rain. This is a look at 24 hour rainfall totals. I mentioned that at the airport since Wednesday, we've seen five inches of rain. But look at southeastern Bear County, 6.8 inches of rain just around uh, the eastern edge of Loop 1604 there. And nearly five and a half inches radar indicated out near Elmendorf. These areas didn't get the rain really on Wednesday, but they got a whole heck of a lot of it yesterday. And so again, the ground is very saturated. Now some of those showers right now along 410 out toward Leon Valley, just north of Lackland Air Force Base and near the airport out toward Live Oak and down toward China Grove. That's where some of the showers are. We've also got a few flashes of lightning out near Medina Lake as this pushes on up to the north. So we can't rule out a few rumbles of thunder out near Bernie up toward Comfort along I-10 there seeing some good rain out near Concan and just to the north of Sabinal and some heavy thunderstorms in Valverde County pushing into Kenny County. So Del Rio, a lot of lightning, uh, Brackettville, a lot of lightning as well. This is pushing up north toward Edwards County, also seeing a thunderstorm moving northeast near La Prior. This is going to move northeast toward Sabinal and close to the Medina Lake area. So for today, 80% chance of showers and storms. Today is going to be a washout. We're still encouraging people to go to the polls today, but just bring your umbrella with you. Uh, and again, check the radar, get the KSAT Weather Authority app before you head out so you can know what to expect. But tomorrow's going to be a beautiful day, gradually clearing 88 degrees, so we will salvage some of our weekend. I'll be back with another look at radar, and we'll talk about today's forecast. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. We are tracking the weather and also tracking the polls, and it is one of the most talked about and debated issues on the ballot this year. We are talking about Proposition B. Voters will decide if the San Antonio Police Department's collective bargaining power could be stripped away. And many voters are still undecided on whether to vote for or against the proposition. Our Alicia Beretta joins us in studio with more on Prop B. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Yeah, well, lots to talk about with Prop B. A lot of confusion, too. On one side, they say that Proposition B is the quickest path to police reform, while another side says that's not the case. But what's clear is that this isn't to dismantle or to defund the police. The grassroots group, Fix SAPD, is behind Proposition B, and what they aim to do is to take away police officers' bargaining rights for everything from officer discipline to their pay and benefits. The group wants, to, wants negotiations to be under a more open or transparent process, and that's known as meet and confer, which is actually used in police departments already like Houston and Austin. This would require both sides of an issue to come to the bargaining table without being forced by a time clock. So essentially, it will hold officers accountable for any misconduct and get them fired permanently. Currently, there have been officers who win back their jobs, and that's because of the bargaining agreement that's in place. And although Fix SAPD says it would not affect health care or pay wages for the police department, those who oppose Prop B warn it could make it harder to retain and recruit officers. So currently the city and police have a contract in place and that runs through September 30th. Prop B would only stop the next contract, but those new agreements could be thrown out 
if enough voters today vote for Prop B. We have several resources on KSAT.com that break down all this information because we know it can be a lot to take in and also a sample ballot for you. Max, Sarah. You're still unsure exactly what Prop B is, or you just want to take a deeper dive into the topic before you head out to vote today. KSAT Explains team did an amazing job explaining it all in an episode on Prop B. It breaks down the ins and outs in order to make sure you make the most informed decision as possible. And you can watch this episode of KSAT Explains right now. Just head to KSAT.com or check it out on the KSAT TV app or on any streaming device. Well, if you're worried about heading out to the polls today because of the virus, we want to let you know safety measures are still in place. Bear County Elections Administrator Jacqu Jacqueline Kellinen says Election Day preparations have been going on all week. We are still running all of the polls with the COVID precautions. So don't hesitate. We're still doing all the contact-free voting at the polls. If you need a way to get to the polls today, VIA has you covered. VIA offering free rides to vote today. All you need is your voter registration card. The offer is valid all day today for regular bus services and VIA Trans Paratransit service in VIA's service area. Registered VIA Trans customers can schedule their trips by phone or online. So if you have any questions, you can find all this information. Just head to KSAT.com. One year latest news, a Hollywood Park police officer catches a suspected catalytic converter thief in the act. It happened Friday morning just around the police station along San Pedro Avenue. Police say the suspect took off but returned a few minutes later because his truck was parked right next to the van he was reportedly trying to steal a converter from. The officer says he ditched his hoodie and tried to play off that he had any connection to the theft. 30-year-old James Hasso was arrested and charged with criminal mischief and evading arrest. The Hollywood Park Police Department says it's going to be teaming up with a local garage to clamp down on the catalytic converter theft problem. They are going to be taking steps to make it easier for stolen catalytic converters to be traced back to their owners or identify them as stolen. When you talk to the salvage yards, and you're just being honest, you're saying, listen, what, what is it that would deter you from buying it? I need to know, because that's what I want to do. And this is a suggestion as well, is look, you've got to give us something to tell us that doesn't belong to them. So we're going to spray paint it, and we're going to put initials on it, or, or whatever identifying we can. The police department will use high temperature spray paint and engrave the VIN numbers on work vehicles owned by businesses. They're primarily trying to help those businesses who leave their fleet parked in the parking lots at night and weekends. The program will be free to Hollywood Park businesses. All right, well, a local car wash owner asking for your help in finding a man accused of an attempted burglary. So take a look at your screen. This was a suspect caught on video at the Pirate Cove Car Wash on Bulverde Bul Bul Road near 1604 on Monday, just before 3 a.m. This is what the owners tell us. They say a black pickup truck can be seen dropping the suspect off. Later in the video, you see the suspect unmasked using a grinding tool to try to open the pay station machine. He's able to get off three sides. And then you can see for like the next 10 minutes, he takes a pair of pliers and he tries to bend the steel up to get inside the machine. There is no money in any of the machines overnight. This guy literally did not get a dollar. But here's the thing. The owner also says the machine that was destroyed cost $20,000. So anyone with any information asked to call SAPD. Time now, 640, 66 degrees out. Those first go. The Spurs. Oh, it was a good start, not a great finish. We're going to have a full recap of the highlights, some of the lowlights. The Children's Ballet of San Antonio is excited for one of their first live performances again after the pandemic put their talent on hold. Up next, we're catching up with the dancers to talk about their return to the stage. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. What's the term? April showers bring May flowers? Well, we're going to be raining into the day, too. I'll take the flowers. I'll take some showers for the flowers. <laughs> yeah, it does come at a cost, though, guys, and that is the risk for flash flooding today just because we've been able to see so much rain since Wednesday. We've been able to see 
more than five inches of rainfall for Wednesday. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at uh, one of our graphics here. I want to show you uh, that since Wednesday, we've seen more than five inches of rainfall so far. We're going to see more today. April's rainfall total amounts to about more than six inches of rain. And this is what's really impressive is that since January 1st, uh, we've seen nine inches of rainfall, but majority of that was just since Wednesday. And now we're actually above average. Unfortunately, this is what happens when we have a lot of rain in a small amount of time. You can see the flooding from last night across many of the streets there. Uh, and again, really concerned about those low water crossings. Low water crossings are the areas that you're going to have to watch out for, especially as we get uh, some uh, potential for some more flash flooding later on today. This is near military in Zarzamora last night. Of course, a lot of people were out for their Friday night. This happened right around the evening commute. Let's go ahead and take a look at radar, though, right now. It's not too bad around San Antonio. I know polls open in 15 minutes here. Uh, and I would suggest that if you want to vote today, you get out there early and do it because the rain that we're seeing out there right now is not going to lead to flash flooding. It is, however, going to create uh, some ponding on the roadways. So you are going to want to just make sure to, to exercise caution out there. We're going to go ahead and pause this and zoom in uh, to the areas that are seeing some heavier rainfall right now. That's near the Leon Valley area and out toward Rio Medina. Again, these are moving to the north and not causing any flash flooding issues, but likely causing some ponding on the roadways. Then out toward Bandera County near Bandera itself. There you go. A good amount of rain there and a good amount of rain along I-10 between Bernie and Comfort at the moment. One thing I want to do is I want to show you some of the stronger uh, systems that are out there right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar that's closer to uh, Del Rio. And you can see the flashes of lightning here uh, with this uh, storm that's moving it through areas in, uh, I believe, we're closer to uh, the uh, intersection of 83 and 57 there. There's potentially even some very small pea-sized hail in that area. And then up across parts of uh, Kenny County, pushing into Edwards County, some stronger thunderstorms. These are moving to the north and to the east. Uh, and of course, we're also watching the Sierra Madres where there's some more development. And so again, all of this rain is going to come in waves around San Antonio today. And occasionally, uh, those showers and storms could could drop an additional one to two inches of rain on these areas in green here and the ground is already saturated and that could lead to flash flooding. That's why there is a flash flood watch in effect through 7 p.m. today. Let's go ahead and take a look at some trans guide images and see the road conditions. Not too bad out there, but again, you're going to want to watch out for those usual low uh, water places that may flood. You can see all of the road spray that's being created there at I-35 and Loop 14. 10 and again this is right by the airport so just take it slow out there this morning no flash flooding in bear county at the moment but of course things can change if you get a brief heavy downpour uh, that just lasts for a while so we'll keep an eye on that it's 65 degrees outside and today temperatures are going to pretty much hover in the 60s all day long let's take a broader look at our weather pattern a lot of heavy rain out near the houston area but our rainfall is being created by this upper level low that is going to slowly push to the east today bringing us all of that heavy rain across the Sierra Madres closer to San Antonio. So taking you through the future cast, heaviest rain this morning is going to be west of San Antonio, but right at around probably lunch hour into the early afternoon, we're also going to have some heavy showers and storms here in San Antonio. There could be some small hail within some of those storms, but the biggest concern today by far is the flooding threat. Then by the evening tonight, we'll start to see things wind down. So again, go early to vote or go late to vote today. The middle of the day is going to be, I think, the part that we see most of the heaviest of the rainfall. Again, by about midnight, we'll see rain come to an end, and tomorrow's going to start off with some areas of fog, 61 degrees. Sorry, I know that the little bug there is blocking your view, uh, but just know that tomorrow in the afternoon, thank you guys in the back for taking that away, we'll be seeing high temperature close to 88 degrees. So tomorrow, Sunday, is going to be a good day to be outside. Today, not so good of a day to be outside with a high temperature near 72 and 80 percent chance for some storms and then on Monday we're going to be warming up to 92 for the high temperature isolated rain is possible on Tuesday but no big washouts like what we're seeing today all right Sarah Spivey thank you so much 648 66 degrees out
Well, for over a year, the pandemic has taken a toll on the arts, especially the performing arts. And so it has actually put a halt on so many theater and so many live performances. But with vaccines and COVID protocols, the Children's Ballet of San Antonio is excited to perform back on stage. I met with the dancers and spoke with them about the return in front of a live audience at the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts. Nice. Keep pointing your feet. Keep breathing. So much repetition and attention to detail is put into rehearsing every move for performance. Make sure that you're elongating, reach, 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 quarter. It's why when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, it was such a blow to performance artists like the dancers with the Children's Ballet of San Antonio. And a lot of these dancers were, think, were wondering when they were going to be able to dance again, not just on the, in the studios, but on the big stage. You need to make sure that you're pushing forward, keeping shoulders to shoulders. The artistic director and founder of the Children's Ballet of San Antonio, Vanessa Bessler, says last March, everything came to a halt for their dancers learning to train over Zoom, and then learning to socially distance on the floor and dance with a mask on. At first, it was pretty difficult to breathe with a mask, but I think once you get used to it, it becomes a lot easier. And I think it's also important in ballet because it helps you build up your stamina. After over a year of having to practice virtually, then transition and performing virtually, the dancers will be finally back in front of a live audience on stage. The Children's Ballet of San Antonio will be performing Swan Lake at the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts May 21st and 22nd. Dancers ages 3 to 21 will finally be able to showcase all their hard work and hours nice. they have put into their art. In the studio, you teach them to dance, you teach them technique, but it's only on a stage where they become artists. It's more of an artistic experience, and when you have a camera in front of you, um, you can take multiple takes and redo it, but when it's live, it's one shot, and it's definitely more fun. More fun, not just for the audience to get back in those theater seats, but more importantly, for these young dancers. I hope that we can go back to normal and continue to do our seasonal performances because I really enjoy doing them and I love the experience. Just really excited for them. They were very excited they could be back in front of a live audience May 21st and 22nd at the Tobin Center. And we're gonna explain more at 9 a.m. Yep. All right, 6.51, 66 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! Go Spurs, go! Came out firing, went to overtime. We're gonna explain what happened. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is May, so the race to the playoffs getting shorter and shorter, so it's time to talk Spurs. Start as a blowout in Boston, ended at a heartbreaker in overtime. Let's roll the highlights. Silver and Black came out swinging and landed a few big. DeJounte Murray, Kansas jumper. Spurs were up 18 to 10 at one point. There he is, Rudy Gay, bringing the boys up to a 21 to 2 run. Spurs shoot 71% from the field, to rack up a season high 39 points in the first quarter. Spurs up 23. Going into the second frame, DeJounte Murray lighting up the Celtics. 9 for 9 in the first half, 20 points. Spurs up 29 points a break. Still shooting a season high 71%. Second half, let's run it. Lonnie Walker carrying the Spurs, scoring 12 of 26 points in the third, going four for four from downtown. Love Lonnie. But here's the thing. The Celtics did not want to go down without a fight. They came alive. They won on a 25 to three run in three and a half minutes. The Spurs led. Well, they led. It went up to 13 in the fourth, two and a half to play. Jason Tatum and the Celtics are raising a 32 point lead. All knotted up at 122. The Celtics had the last shot. Tatum missed the 15-footer. They went to overtime. And sadly, there you go. Black screen, final score, 143-140. Next game, Philadelphia 76ers against the Spurs right here at home. Tip-off tomorrow, 7 p.m. at the AT&T Center. So there you go, 656, 66 degrees out. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. We are still seeing some rain on the radar, the heaviest of which uh, is currently working its way through uh, the Leon Valley area, even up to Chavano Park. Uh, but this is moving steadily, so we're not too worried about flash flooding at the moment, but we do have a flash flood watch in effect for the rest of the day until 7 p.m. as heavier, more widespread rain is expected uh, during the mid morning and into the early afternoon. Now, the good news is we are going to see plenty of sunshine tomorrow. 
will be drying out. We need to dry out, but you know what? I have to say, I'm thankful for this rain. We have extreme drought conditions out there and stage two water restrictions. We'll continue to keep you updated throughout the day on air, online, and our Weather Authority app. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. We're going to be back at 8. Weather, Election Day, breaking news. See you at 8. Robin, he was just talking about it. Our main weather story today is going to be the potential for some uh, flash flooding. Now, right now, we really don't have a lot of flash flooding in the area. We have no flash flooding in the area. Just some heavier rain on the northwest side of Bear County there along I-10 up toward Bernie and into Comfort. But we do have that flash flood watch in effect through 7 p.m. today because additional rain is expected here within the next couple of hours. We'll see some pockets of heavy rain that could lead to more flash flooding. Today, temperatures only in the 60s and 70s. Well, good morning to you. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Flash flooding is going to be the name of the game today. We're going to be watching out for it. There's a flash flood watch in effect until 7 p.m. tonight. Right now, not too much rain around Bear County. If you want to head out and vote, I would do so now uh, because later on in the day, we're going to have the risk for uh, flash flooding a little bit more than we do right now. But some heavy rain along I-10 from uh, about the rim area up to Bernie and then up to, toward Comfort and into Kerrville as well. And then out toward Uvalde, we've got one thunderstorm in Valley County. This is moving to the northeast and will likely impact uh, northwestern Bear County within the next uh, two hours or so. So again, flash flood watch in effect through 7 p.m. for an additional one to two inches of rain. We've seen five inches of rain in San Antonio since Wednesday. Today we're going to have again uh, showers and storms, a high temperature only near 72 degrees, less rain in the later half of the day. Tomorrow we'll salvage the weekend with sunny skies and 88. Flash flooding just yet for us here in San Antonio, but we are under a flash flood watch until 7 p.m. 80% chance for rain and storms, widespread rain and storms for the first part of the day here and into the afternoon. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Vaccines are becoming more and more available and more and more people across Bear County are getting their shot. We have the latest on the pandemic and the latest number of cases here at home. It's election day. The polls are opened. They opened at 7 a.m. You have until 7 p.m. to cast your vote for our city elections. Our Alicia Beretta will be live at a polling location with all the information you need to know before you head out. And also what you need to know before you head out, weather. It has been a wild couple days. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for what we can expect for the rest of the weekend. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday, May 1st. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. I got to say, last night, Thunderstorms, oh rain, gosh. a couple notifications. I know, you know, the phone was going off the flash flood warnings. I drove in the rain was actually safely, safely, really slowly, but it was a little terrifying at one point, Sarah. Well, and flash flood warnings, they can be terrifying, and that's why we encourage people to stay home if a flash flood warning is issued. But if you do have to drive, avoid those areas that typically flood low water crossings. But we're not really worried about flash flooding at the moment here in San Antonio. In fact, you can see really only just some light rain around Bear County. So if you do want to vote, I would say get out there now, especially if you live inside Loop 410 and south of Highway 90. I think you're going to be okay for the next, honestly, couple of hours. But uh, up toward uh, Kendall County, Comfort, Bernie, you can see some good light to moderate rain there and out toward Kerrville. I'm going to put a pause on this because one of the uh, heaviest showers and, and storms that we're dealing with right now is just to the west of Hondo. Of course, just to the south of Hondo, a couple of days ago on Wednesday night into Thursday morning, we did have a, a confirmed tornado that moved south of Hondo. This uh, storm that's moving to the northeast across Highway 90 is not severe at the moment. Again, just a few flashes of lightning with it. You can see that little uh, line there. That's actually a flash of lightning there between Sabinal and Hondo. There might be some very small pea-sized hail within this storm, but we're not concerned about severe weather. Again, this is moving to the east, uh, northeast, uh, so it should be able to make its way uh, close to, 
I would say uh, the Lake Hills area up into 1604, probably uh, by about nine o'clock this morning. Let's go ahead and switch on over to the radar that's closer to Del Rio because we've actually got some stronger storms out there as well. If you are one of our viewers in Eagle Pass, just to your west there, you are hearing the, the thunder and seeing the lightning. Again, this is moving to the north and east. It may also contain some small hail with it, but it is not a severe storm. These showers and uh, storms are going to continue to move north and east throughout the day, eventually making it to the San Antonio area and I-35, probably by the late morning and into the early afternoon. This is when we're really going to be very concerned about flash flooding. We do have a flash flood watch through 7 p.m. today for an additional one to two inches of rainfall on top of all of the rain we've seen since Wednesday. But do not fret. The weekend is not going to be a washout. Tomorrow's going to be a really nice day. We'll see skies gradually clear and we'll be back up into the 80s. So coming up in the forecast, we'll have another recap of the radar and I'll show you just how much rain has fallen in some neighborhoods since Wednesday. The numbers are impressive. Max and Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. And like Sarah Spivey was just talking about that potential for that flash flood watch we're under. So right now on KSAT.com, we have a map that gives live updates on road conditions and closures. Remember, it is illegal to drive around barricades at low water crossings. All the red dots in this map indicate areas that are closed. We'll be monitoring this map throughout the morning. Just remember, turn around, don't drown. All right, on top of the weather, we are also monitoring the polls. It is election day and we are covering the latest updates, bringing you all the latest information on the race for mayor, all the city council seats and both big propositions. And the polls are officially open. They opened at 7 a.m. Our Alicia Beretta is live outside Lions Field off of Broadway with more on where to vote and how to get a free ride and what to bring with you. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, really, the reality is long lines are not expected, but just in case there are any problems like we did see in some counties during the presidential election during uh, machines going down and really that's to verify your ID that is done manually. So again, if anything like that, a little hiccup or backup, the thing that you want to do is bring a raincoat or bring your umbrella as you may have to wait in line a little longer than expected. But take a look on your screen. The polls opened exactly at 7 a.m. and they'll remain open for the next 11 hours. All you you need to bring is a valid form of ID that includes your driver's license, of course, a state ID, right? So uh, state ID, a military ID. Also, other options include your citizen certi citizenship certificate with a photo or a passport. But where exactly should you vote today? Well, if you're going to be running around town doing errands, good news. You don't have to vote in your neighborhood or even your district. You can vote wherever is most convenient for you, and you have plenty to choose from. There are more than 240 voting centers here in Bear County. And to make voting even easier for you, VIA is stepping up yet again. They're offering free rides to the voting polls. All you have to do is show your uh, your voter registration card. So no, you don't have to bring the voter registration ca uh, card to cast your ballot. But again, if you want that free ride to the polls, you're asked to show that to the bus operator. And we know that these local elections are extremely important. So if you'll head over to ksat.com forward slash vote underscore 2021. There we have all the breakdown for all the races, what to watch, explaining prop A, prop B, all you need to know. That way you make an informed decision at the polls. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. And if you're still not sure what Proposition B means, the case that explains team did a whole episode on the topic, explaining the ins and outs in order to help you make a more informed decision at the polls today. You can write, watch that right now on KSAT.com or the KSAT TV app or on any streaming device. All right. And speaking of the election, we have our election night coverage. It's going to start at 7 p.m. with our election night live stream. Steve Spreeser will be joined by a panel of experts discussing what is on the ballot. They're going to be analyzing the live results as they come in. Also, we expect appearances throughout the night. San Antonio Police Union President Danny Diaz, a representative from Fix SAPD, Mayor Ron Nuremberg and mayoral challenger Greg Brockhouse all expected to join in. So make sure to tune in to our website, KSA. That TV streaming app and of course our KSAT Facebook page.
Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home here in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 267 new cases of COVID here at home. Luckily, no new deaths announced in the last 24 hours. The city is also reporting 230 people in our local hospitals, 69 people in the ICU, 44 on ventilators. In regards to vaccinations, so far more than 768,000 people across Bear County have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine. And get this, more than 524,000 people are fully vaccinated. Well, starting Monday, the Public Works Department is closing Commerce Street between Flores and Laredo Streets due to construction. One westbound lane will be open from Flores Street to Cameron Street, allowing access to affected downtown businesses. This is part of a bond project that includes road reconstruction, sidewalk improvements, and wayfinding signage. The, clo the closure will last through Saturday, May 15th, if weather permits. Well, something very important to tell you about the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center continues to have extremely low blood supplies, and that is why they are hosting a blood drive today. They say they need at least 600 donors every day to meet the seven day supply. If you'd like to donate, you can make an appointment to donate blood today at the HEB on 281 North. That is on 20935 North Highway 281. It is happening this morning from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. You can make an appointment by calling the number on your screen 210-731-5590 or visiting SouthTexasBlood.org. Time now is just about 809, 66 degrees out. A gold plated Nintendo made just mm. for Queen Elizabeth is up for sale. Still ahead where you can buy it and how much it costs. And go Spurs go a late night game because of overtime started swinging. We're going to tell you how it ended. Take a look outside with live cam 66 degrees. Looks like we have a little break in the rain like Sarah Spivey was saying, but what will our afternoon look like? She'll let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. It seems a little calm and quiet out there now, especially considering what we had to deal with the last 24 hours. Yeah, it's been a lot of rain, Sarah Spivey, but and you said maybe some more later this afternoon. Definitely some more rain. <laughs> In fact, we're going to see some more rain here within the next hour or so. And this is a look at some of the rainfall so far. We're going to add on to these totals, but this has been rain since Wednesday. Look at that, almost five and a half inches of rain at the airport since Wednesday. Wow, a lot of rainfall. Nearly more than six inches of rain in Leon Valley, five inches St. Hedwig, about an inch and a half JBSA Randolph, four and a half inches in Seguin, five plus in Bulverde, about an inch in Bernie, but Bernie, you've added on to that this morning so far. So that's some good news. And about four and a half inches out near Castroville. Now, uh, one thing I want to show you is that we are enjoying a brief break in the rain generally here in Bear County. Uh, there are some areas of light rain showers, mainly on the north side toward Bulverde, Garden Ridge, mm -hmm. Hollywood Park area on that northern tier of 1604. We're also seeing some good rain out in Kendall County right now from Bernie to Comfort, even up into Kirk County. County. However, there is one storm that is just to the west of Hondo, actually approaching Hondo right now, that I want us to focus on. It doesn't have a ton of lightning with it, but it does have a few lightning strikes. You'll notice this purple color here. I do think that there could be some uh, P to penny sized hail in this storm as it's moving to the northeast. So Hondo, it might get loud for you. Uh, Penny sized hail is not considered severe, but it still could be on the loud side. It is moving to the northeast at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to time this out for you, uh, basically moving it to the northeast at about 35, 40 miles per hour. So if it holds its strength, uh, areas like Rio Medina could see potentially some P to penny sized hail as early as 830 this morning, 835. So just within the next 20 minutes. And if it holds on, it could impact the northwestern section of Bear County, like Chavano Park, shortly after 
uh, about uh, 930. So again, just to put this in into play for you, that's the one storm that we'll be watching as it's moving closer to San Antonio. However, there are some more storms out to the west. And so let's go ahead and take a trip out toward uh, Maverick County. Our friends in Eagle Pass, our friends right along the Rio Grande there. Zooming into Eagle Pass, you'll notice the same thing I just mentioned with um, that storm that's out near Hondo. You see those purple colors? and also quite a few lightning strikes with this. This is not a severe storm, but it is strong enough to produce some nickel sized hail. So Eagle Pass, again, you are uh, probably gonna be uh, seeing some pretty loud uh, thunderstorm activity here within the next about 20 minutes or so. These are moving to the north and east and they'll take their time before they get to San Antonio, but they just might uh, by the late morning and midday hours and we'll be watching those carefully. So why all the rain? Well, we've got this big upper level low pressure system right here that's continuing to fuel our rain chances. This is a look at the future cast at nine. You can see what I mentioned. Those storms that are right near Eagle Pass, they're going to be west of San Antonio with the heaviest rain, potentially making it to us here in San Antonio around the lunch hour. We'll also be looking out for some of that uh, penny sized hail. But the biggest concern, as I've mentioned, is that the flash flooding could become an issue because the ground is so saturated across the hill country and across San Antonio. But by the later evening hours, so this is 7 p.m. when polls close, our rain will be a lot less in the area. So go vote now. Maybe wait and have lunch at home if you need to. And then another window of opportunity to vote would be in the later afternoon hours. By midnight tonight, rain will be coming to an end. But just a reminder, today there is a threat for flash flooding. That flash flood watch is in effect until 7 p.m. for all of these counties in green here for an additional one to two inches of rain. Keep that case that weather app handy uh, because we'll be sending notifications right to your phone. High temperature today only in the low 70s because of all the clouds and the rain, but we will salvage the weekend tomorrow with a nice day starting off with some fog, but in the afternoon it'll be toasty. 88 for the high temperature, 90s on Monday. Another front on Tuesday, but this one with a lot less chance for rainfall, only 30%. Thank you, Sarah. And also on KSAT.com, we have a web article from meteorologist Justin Horn listing roadways that are most likely to flood during those flood watches. Those are Salado Creek at I-35, Bassey Road and 281, Pin Road and the lower levels of I-35. For more details about these areas, just head to KSAT.com. That article is on our homepage. All right, time now is 817, 66 degrees out. The Queen is without Nintendo this morning. <laughs> now the gold plated console is being sold. We tell you for how much still ahead. All right, it is NFL Draft Weekend. The second round is in the books. We're going to break down some of the Cowboys' latest and newest players. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday and go Spurs, go Spurs playing the Boston Celtics last night at the TD Garden in Boston, taking control right off the tip. That's all the highlights. DeJounte Murray cannon the jumper. Spurs were up 18-10 and it is coming along. Look at that, 34-12. That makes it 39-12. They were on fire. They were shooting 71% from the field, racking up a season high 39 points in the first quarter. Spurs would go up 23. DeJounte lighten up the Celtics. Nine for nine in the first half for 20 points. Spurs up 29 at the break, still shooting 71% from the field. Let's go to the second half. All right, Lonnie Walker carrying the Spurs in the third quarter, scoring 12 of the Spurs, 26 points. Four for four from downtown, but the Celtics, they would not go down without a fight. They come alive on a 25-3 to three run in only three and a half minutes. Spurs lead would go down to 13 going into the fourth quarter. Two and a half to play. Jason Tatum erasing that 32-point deficit. Knotted up 122. Let's go to halftime. There we go. 35 seconds to play in OT. Lonnie Walker right from the top of the arc. Give the Spurs a one-point edge. 16-footer. Celtics would go up five. DeMar finding Patty Mills. Cannon the three. A one-point game. Celtics hit both free throws. Spurs have to go the length of the court. Can they do it? Last second shot, and it is no good. The Celtics come back from a 32-point deficit. Jason Tatum, 60 points, and the Spurs lose 143 to 140. But don't worry, we still got the month of May. The Spurs play again tomorrow, 7 o'clock, taking on the Philadelphia 76ers right here at home at the AT&T Center. 
All right, we are far from done talking about sports because it is NFL Draft Weekend. Time to talk football. The Cowboys drafting Micah Parsons, linebacker from Penn State, in round one. And they stuck with improving their defense. Kicking off the second round, they pick Kentucky cornerback Kelvin Johnson, 44th overall on top of his top-tier stats at both Kentucky and LSU. He's really, really fast. He ran a 4.34 at his pro day. He was not the only person drafted last night. Here are the Cowboys' picks. Kelvin Joseph, Kentucky. There we go. Osa Odigazua from UCLA. Defensive end Chauncey Golston from Big Ten's Iowa. And then there we go. Nashawn Wright from Oregon. I mean, there you, you see it on your screen. All defensive players. That was a big need in the last season. So we will see. Go, go Cowboys. Go, yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. That's not convincing enough. 823, 66 degrees out. All right, government report shows Americans' incomes increased at record speed in March. The details still ahead in our next half hour. Welcome back. A video game console could be worth its weight in gold. Literally. We are talking about a Nintendo Wii that is made of gold and is being sold on eBay for $300,000. The 24-karat gold-plated console was sent to Queen Elizabeth in 2009 as a marketing stunt, but Kensington Palace returned it right to Nintendo. Well, the now owner says experts have valued the console at up to $1 million. Oh. Wow. Okay. He declined to say how much he paid for it four years ago. You know what? I'm uh, not a big video game guy, so I think I'm going to save my money for this one. Um, yeah. Hard pass. Me too. <laughs> there you go. All right. 827, 66 degrees out. Well, next we continue with our election coverage. Our Alicia Barrera will be live from a polling location with the five key races to watch. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday, 830 this morning, May 1st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And if you're like us, you had a night full of lightning, thunder, notifications, I warnings. Know. When you try to go to sleep early, like our schedule, there was nothing. And the phone keeps going off. It was a uh, perpetual notifications, thunder, and then the draft notifications. You know, but I'll take the the you know the no sleep for yeah. this rain, Sarah, because it's much needed. It is much needed, and you know, as a general rule, we're very very grateful for the rain. It does have a couple of downsides to it, though. One of them, this, the pollen count today. Mold is very high because of all the rain we've seen. It's taken a big jump up. So if you're wheezing in season, that mold's the reason. And another downside is that we're going to have a risk for flash flooding today, a lot like we did last night. Uh, now, this is a look at 24-hour uh, rainfall totals or rainfall estimates. And you can see the areas that the rain really fell in high amounts. In Guadalupe County, just south of Seguin, six inches of radar indicated rainfall all the way to the east side of Bear County there, all the way down to Elmendorf, about five and a half to six inches of rain. We also got an additional two inches of rain at the airport. Uh, and so that brings our grand total for the last couple of days to five and a half inches of rain here in San Antonio. So some very good rain, but the ground, to say the least, is completely saturated. Any heavy rain that lingers will likely lead to flash flooding. Now, right now out there in Bear County, it's actually good out there. If if you want to vote today, go now. <laughs> go now to vote, especially if you live inside of Loop 410 and south of Highway 90. It's a good chance for you to go vote right now. There is one storm that's just to the north of Hondo heading to Medina Lake and going to move up to the northeast. It should make it to areas like Bernie, that I-10 corridor by about, I would say, 9 o'clock. So again, even for most of Bear County, it's going to be dry or at least drier than it has been over the next hour or so. So if you want to vote, now's the time to do it. There is a lot of rain, though, up in the Hill Country. This is good news for the Edwards Aquifer. The recharge zones there, Kerrville, you're looking at some heavy rain at times, Sisterdale Comfort, and also just to the west of Bandera and to Lakey. You can also see a few flashes of lightning there. No severe weather with this, but we are seeing some heavy rain. There is, however, the potential for some nickel-sized hail out near near Eagle Pass right now with this line of storms that's moving to the northeast. Near Brackettville, you can see quite a few flashes of lightning. This is the very heavy rain that we'll be watching as it moves north and east 
to uh, when it makes it to San Antonio, probably around the mid day hours, right around lunch and into the early afternoon. That's when I believe our chance for flash flooding in San Antonio is going to be the highest midday into the early afternoon. Flash flood watch through 7 p.m. today for that additional one to two inches of rain. Uh, in all these counties in green here, we're going to keep you updated. If you do get a flash flood warning, you'll get it right to your phone and you can pull up the radar here on your KSAT Weather Authority app and keep an eye on things. So today, 80% chance for rain and storms again, especially noon into the early afternoon. Then right around dinner, we'll start to see rain taper off. It should be only isolated in the evening hours coming up in the forecast. We're going to show you a look around at some of the road conditions in San Antonio if you want to head out right now. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. We'll check back in in a little bit. Well, as she was saying, it is Election Day in San Antonio. The polls are now open and voters will have the opportunity to choose between 80 candidates who are running for 11 seats. That includes mayor and city council seats. Another hot topic on the ballot, Proposition B. Our Alicia Beretta is live outside Lions Field with more on what races to watch. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, here at Lionsville, it's actually been pretty slow. There is some activity of those encouraging people to vote, but not many voters. But let me tell you, 11 seats available and two propositions that you voters will be able to decide on. But here are the top uh, five races, maybe the most popular races that you should look out for. Let's start with Proposition B. We know that one has caused a lot of opinions. It aims to strip police officers of collective bargaining rights for topics including pay, benefits, and discipline. If it passes, negotiations would be more transparent and hold officers accountable for misconduct. Proposition B would not defund the police department, but those who oppose it say that Prop B could make it harder to recruit and retain officers. Another race to watch, the 2019 rematch for San Antonio mayor. Conservative and former city councilman Greg Brockhouse wants to take the seat as leader of the city, but Mayor Ron Nirenberg has been campaigning really hard to avoid a runoff against his challenger once again on your ballot you'll see a total of 14 candidates for the mayoral race another race to watch that's for district two will current councilwoman jada andrew sullivan keep her seat or will the east side district be led by any of the other 11 candidates on the ballot on the ballot one of them is actually her former communications director now let's move on to the south side where there's an open seat for district three councilwoman rebecca viagran has reached her term limit and now her younger sister phyllis viagran and former state rep thomas uresti along with 11 others won a shot at leading south san antonio and it's a similar situation in district five due to term limits 11 people hope to replace councilwoman shirley gonzalez there's no clear front runner in this race but finance records say that the candidates who have raised the most money are norberto jeremy landon and terry castillo so again, we know this is a lot of information, but we're wanting our viewers to make an informed decision at the poll. So you can head over to ksat.com forward slash vote underscore 2021, where we have the breakdown on these races and so much more. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, KSAT's election night coverage will begin tonight at 7 p.m. with our election night live stream. Our Steve Spreester will be joined by a panel of experts to discuss what's on the ballot and analyze the results live as they come in. Tune in on our website, KSAT TV streaming app and KSAT's Facebook page. All right, now to the latest on the pandemic. Metro Health offering even more opportunities for you to get a vaccine if you are still waiting for one. And here's the thing, you don't need an appointment to get one. Here's a list of events for next Monday. New Life Christian Center off U.S. Highway 90 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Residents will get the Pfizer vaccine and at St. Henry Catholic Church just off South Florida Street from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can get the one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Also remember that the Alamo Dome is accepting walk ins as well. They are open Tuesday through Saturday and the times 9 a.m. to 630 p.m. All right, well, there is only 30 days left in this year's session of the Texas legislature and some lawmakers and advocacy, advocacy groups are hoping laws regarding fees for electric vehicles well, beat the clock. Well, as traffic authority Samuel King reports, it's an effort to make up for lost gas tax revenue. 
Electric vehicles and even hybrids use less gas than regular vehicles, but obviously still use the road. So some think it's time they pay their fair share, but others worry fees that are too high would discourage some people from making the switch. Lawmakers filed several bills on the issue this session. The one that is farthest along is a bill from House Transportation Committee Chairman Terry Canales. It would impose a $100 yearly fee on electric vehicles, but also work to establish a statewide charging network. Base Grogan with the Texas Public Interest Research Group says that would be a game changer. What that means is that not only will electric cars be paying their fair share for the roads, but they'll also be investing in the future for when that market share of electric cars is much greater. That's really the only thing we need for more electric cars on the road is more, more infrastructure for people to be sure that they can get where they want to go. Other proposals would charge electric vehicle owners higher fees on average, $200 or even $300 per year. That would bring in more money for the state and counties, but some vehicle owners argue those fees would be too high and they already pay sales taxes on electricity. Both the Texas House and Senate would have to pass any bill in the last month of the session before Governor Greg Abbott would consider them. The National Conference of State Legislatures says 28 states currently charge additional fees for electric vehicles, and of those, 14 states also charge additional fees for hybrid vehicles. Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, Houston police found more than 90 people crammed into a two-story building at a Houston home on yesterday. Police say they suspect the home was used in a human smuggling operation. They also say all 90 victims were removed and given food and water. Assistant Chief of the Houston Police Department says several of the people showed symptoms of COVID-19. So far, no arrests have been made. The investigation is ongoing. The Department of Homeland Security Secretary hopes to end border expulsions, quote unquote, as quickly as possible. Alejandro Mayorkas talked about the so-called Title 42. It was revoked by former President Donald Trump in the early days of the pandemic. It allows for quick removal of some migrants coming from Mexico on a public health basis. The Biden administration continues to use that rule, but they also say it's only to buy time to change the immigration system. Well, today marks 10 years since U.S. SEAL Team 6 killed Osama bin Laden in a raid on his compound in Pakistan. The Al-Qaeda leader is best known as the mastermind of the 9-11 attacks, but he was also accused of other deadly acts of terrorism. On this day 10 years ago, special forces arrived by helicopter at the compound in Pakistan. Personnel found bin Laden armed short after the Al-Qaeda leader was killed. Al-Qaeda is now vowing to wage war on all fronts. It's expected the group will again join with the Taliban forces once U.S. troops leave Afghanistan. Well, time now is 841, 66 degrees out. Amazon profit soaring in the first quarter. This as the company gets ready for Prime Day. We tell you when you can take advantage of those deals. And NASA's SpaceX crew will return to Earth Sunday after undocking from the ISS today. More on their journey next. 66 degrees outside. Looks like we have a nice break in the rain. Sarah Spive has been talking about that now, but what will our afternoon look like? She'll let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It has been an interesting 24 hours when it comes to the weather. Absolutely, Sarah Spivey has, has it all covered. Sarah, I mean, we're yeah. gonna have, this is gonna continue throughout the afternoon. We have had active weather since about Wednesday. Of course, on Wednesday, we had some severe weather and plenty of rain. Since Wednesday, at the airport, we've seen five inches plus of rain, almost five and a half inches of rainfall. And that brought our average, uh, or pardon me, that brought our April rainfall to more than six inches of rain. And this is also really impressive. Since the first of the year, we've had nine inches of rain. Before these rain events, we were seeing a major massive rain deficit, but since the first of the year, and just in the last couple of days, we've actually seen more than an inch than average from the first of the year. So a lot of healthy rainfall right now in San Antonio and in Bear County. We're seeing a small temporary break in the rain. Uh, not too much going on other than some road spray out there in many of these areas. But as you can see, uh, very light isolated showers here and there around Bear County. So if you wanted to vote, especially if you live generally south of this line here from Schertz to Leon Valley, 
this would be a good time to do it. Why do I say that? Because there is a storm that's moving across Medina Lake right now that is moving to the north and to the east. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And again, near Lake Hills and Medina Lake area, we could even see some small pea-sized hail with this. As I turn it to the side, you can see the flashes of lightning here with this storm as well. And as I mentioned, this is moving to the, to the northeast at about, I would say, 35 to 40 miles per hour. So I can actually put a track on it. There we go. We'll move it to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour. So it'll be making its way toward the Bernie area uh, by about 9.15. So just within the next about 30 minutes or so. Something to note too is that in the hill country in Kerrville, it's been raining steadily there for about two hours right now. Uh, and these areas in the hill country definitely did not see as much rain as us in San Antonio yesterday. So the ground is not quite as saturated, but we're gonna be watching these areas very closely for the potential for flash flood as well because that rain is moving slowly to the north and to the east. Let's go ahead and take a look at some storms that are a little bit stronger out toward uh, the border and out toward the Rio Grande. Uh, so areas in Maverick County, uh, plenty of lightning with this as well. Moving up toward uh, Carrizo Springs, there's even the potential for some nickel sized hail there and a wider view here in uh, Valverde County, moving it to Kinney County toward Brackettville. This line of storms is gonna push to the Northeast and it'll probably, the energy from that will probably make its way to us uh, by about uh, the lunch hour and around that time that's when we're really going to be on alert for flash flooding here in Bear County. A flash flood watch for all these counties in green until 7 p.m. today. Taking a look outside though with uh, the trans guide cameras you can see that the roads are doing all right. There's not too much out there apart from a few uh, areas of ponding. So again if you want to head it out to vote now would be the time to do it rather than around lunch. So keep that in mind. 66 degrees out there. We're going to keep our temperatures in the 60s and and low 70s for most of the day. This big upper level low, that's what's bringing us this rain. It is going to slowly push to the east today. And so again, that line of storms is likely going to make it to the San Antonio area and continue to rain in the hill country right at around lunch. Around that time, we could have some small hail, but really, again, the biggest concern is going to be the potential for flooding. So again, tomorrow, that's going to be our day to enjoy the weekend. We'll be waking up near 61 degrees with foggy skies, but in the afternoon, it'll clear out nicely. 88 for the high temperature, so Sunday's going to be a nice day. Today, though, we're going to be rained in for most of the day. Again, 80% chance for storms. Right around dinner, that'll change to about a 40% chance for scattered showers and storms, making it all the way down to only isolated rain by midnight. And then after that nice day tomorrow, we'll be warm on Monday, another front moves through on Tuesday, but this one is not going to bring widespread rain. Rather, we'll have a chance for isolated showers and storms. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, NASA says its SpaceX crew will return to Earth tomorrow after undocking from the International Space Station today. All right, so the timeline was pushed back a day because of the weather conditions in the splashdown zones just off the coast of Florida. The crew includes three NASA astronauts and one astronaut from Japan's space agency. They're returning on a SpaceX crew Dragon capsule named Resilience. This is the first fully operational crewed mission for the private space company. All right, time now is 8.50, 67 degrees out. A government report shows a record pace surge in Americans' incomes. Next on GMSA, we explain what this means. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday in your morning consumer news. Personal income and spending up big in March. Friday, the Bureau of Economic Analysis reported personal income rose 21% in March. This is the largest monthly increase on record and represents $4.2 trillion. All right, I don't mean to burst any bubbles here, but the disposable income also hit a record of below $4.2 trillion. Here's the thing. The Bureau says the income increases were largely because of the increase in government benefits, including those stimulus checks. All right, switching gears to Amazon, the first quarter of 2021, a great one for Amazon. The online retail profits more than tripled in the first quarter. This week, Amazon reported a whopping $8.1 billion in quarterly net income. That's up 224% from the same period last year. All right, so the number crushing Wall Street analyst predictions, those predictions closer to $5 billion. So, you know. Clearly, the benchmark wasn't even set low. While Amazon hasn't set an actual date for its popular Prime Day sales, the company says it will take place in June. 
There you go. Amazon taking over. Seriously. <laughs> 854, 66 degrees out. Well, what's your go-to cocktail? Mm. Think about that. Next on GMSA, a look at the most popular drinks in each state. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. Can you guess Texas's most popular cocktail? Think about it. <laughs> All right, well, an Austin-based travel company, Upgraded Points, recently conducted a study to determine which cocktail residents of each state searched the most on Google this past year. So go ahead and take a look. According to the oh. study, a margarita. There we go. Is the Lone Star State's most popular drink. All right, some more interesting searches. Nevada, its most popular drink, a Shirley Temple. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Arkansas, Virginia, and Washington, all tied with a mojito. And overall, the most popular cocktail in the country is a mimosa. Boom. And second place is pina colada. Max, do you like pina coladas? Uh, I like pina coladas and dancing in the rain. No, tequila, <laughs> two ice. 857, 66 degrees out. Alamo Draft House confirming one of its locations here in San Antonio is closing for good. Still ahead, the reason behind the closure. Right now on GMSA at 9 a.m., it is Election Day, and we are tracking what you need to know at the polls, where to vote, how to vote, and what you need to bring with you. Plus, helping find an attempted burglar, what the owner of a local business says the suspect was after, and how much money it set him back. And on top of everything, we are tracking the latest when it comes to the weather and what you can expect for the rest of the day. We are going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, May 1st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. A lot of people waking up late because they weren't able to go to sleep. Very loud, loud weather last night. I know, and it got a little dangerous at some points with those flash flood warnings we had, Sarah Spivey. But are those going to continue through the afternoon? We do have a flash flood watch in place until 7 p.m. So there could be another round of flash flooding here in Bear County. I would guess right around lunch and a little bit after that into the early afternoon, uh, because as you can see around Bear County right now, we're enjoying a little bit of a break from the rain. Now the roads are still damp and so there's plenty of road spray out there. And even though in Bear County, most of us are enjoying a break from the rainfall, there's still a good storm just to the west of uh, Bear County into uh, right around uh, the Medina Lake area and Bandera. You can see a few flashes of lightning there with this as it's moving into Bandera County, zooming in a little bit closer. And there's even some of these purples here that might be some pea sized hail, uh, but again, not a severe storm. Uh, and if we put it in motion again, you can see that it's heading toward the Bernie area. So Bernie, uh, you're going to be having another round of heavy rain here and a wider view. And I want to show you that out near curve and in that part of our, our KSAT 12 viewing area, it's been raining steadily since about 730 this morning. Now, Kerrville only saw about a quarter of an inch of rain from yesterday's rainfall, so they're not as saturated as us here in San Antonio, but we'll still be monitoring that. Uh, again, if you uh, want to vote today, you haven't done any kind of early voting and you've had plans to vote today in San Antonio, now's a great time to do that because a little bit further off to our uh, west here, we've We've got another line of storms that's moving through a uh, Maverick County moving through Brackettville. I'm going to turn off the lightning here just so that we can see this a little bit better moving through Brackettville, moving through Maverick County uh, and toward Carrizo Springs. This is on track to move to the north and to the northeast uh, toward San Antonio by uh, again, I think about lunch and into the early afternoon. So we'll be monitoring that because again, there is a flash flood watch in place until 7 p.m today for an additional one to two inches of rain on already saturated ground in all of these counties in green here uh, and even pockets of up to four inches possible. Now all that rain unfortunately made mold uh, sky high temp uh, mold is past 11,000 and so that's one of the downsides to the rain but coming up I'll show you rainfall totals so far since Wednesday it's looking good as we head into these dry summer months in just a couple of weeks. Sarah Max. Thank you, Sarah. We know city council seats and the mayor up for election today. We also talk a great deal about Proposition B. We're going to be going over that extensively in just a few moments. But we also know another proposition aimed to help bridge the gap for affordable housing in San Antonio is on the ballot.
Currently, the money available is limited to public works, but if voters vote for Prop A, it could grant more flexibility on how to spend those bond dollars. That's right. Alicia Barrett joining us live outside the polls with more on Proposition A. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, we're talking about voter approved bonds. So currently there is no flexibility or not much of it anyway. And if a Prop A passes, some fear that it would provide too much flexibility. So let's break it down for you. The city of San Antonio is actually the only major Texas city that restricts bond money to public works and Proposition A aims to change that. Currently, the city charter only allows bonds to construct, acquire, equip, renovate, improve, and repair public works. If you decide to vote for Prop A, you're voting for the language to be amended and include that bonds be used for any other public purpose not prohibited by the Texas Constitution, which in terms would allow for the possibility of housing affordability projects to be included in the upcoming bond program. And that actually starts in 2022 and runs until 2027. If you vote against Prop A, you're voting to keep limiting how those bonds are used. So again, this can be a little confusing. We have all the information now on ksat.com forward slash vote underscore 2021. There we go into detail about Prop A and other items on the ballot. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Another item on the ballot that she was referring to, Proposition B. The grassroots group Fix SAPD is behind the proposal to take away police officers' bargaining rights for everything from officer discipline to their pay and benefits. The group Fix SAPD wants negotiations to be under a more open or transparent process known as meet and confer, which is used in police departments like Houston and Austin. It would require both sides of an issue to come to the bargaining table without being forced by a time clock. And although Fix SAPD says it would not affect health care or pay wages for the police department, those who oppose Prop B warn it could make it much more difficult to retain and recruit new officers. Well, if you're still unsure exactly what Prop B is or just want to take a deeper dive into the topic before you go vote today, the Case at Explains team did a whole episode on the topic. It breaks down the ins and outs in order to help you make a more informed decision. You can watch that right now on KSAT.com or the KSAT TV app or any streaming device. Now to the latest this morning, a local car wash owner asking for the public's help finding a man accused of an attempted burglary. So take a look at your screen. This suspect caught on video at the Pirate Cove car wash on Bulverde Road near 1604 on Monday, just before 3 a.m. The owner of the car wash says a black pickup truck seen dropping the suspect off. Later in the video, you see him unmasked using a grinding tool to try and open the pay station machine. He was able to get three sides off. And then you can see for like the next 10 minutes, he takes a pair of pliers and he tries to bend the steel up to get inside the machine. There's no money in any of the machines overnight. This guy literally did not get a dollar. He didn't get a dollar, but the owner added the machine was destroyed and it cost $20,000. He's now asking anyone with information to contact SAPD. Well, now to an update on a story we reported on earlier this week. A lobbyist accused of drugging a state capitol staffer will not face any charges. The Texas Department of Public Safety and Travis County District Attorney's Office says there are not, there's not enough evidence to support these allegations. In a joint statement, they say in part, quote, we work hard to ensure that potential victims are always treated with respect and dignity, and we encourage all women to continue reporting potential crimes to us. DPS has conducted a thorough investigation together. They say we have concluded that there is not enough evidence to support these allegations and that criminal charges are not appropriate. No crime occurred in this instance, end quote. All right, well, back here at home, Alamo Drafthouse confirming one of their locations in San Antonio now closing for good. It's location off Southwest Loop 410 near Highway 151. A spokesperson says the impact of the pandemic was just too much for the West West Lakes location. Originally opening in 2004, there are still two other Alamo Drafthouse locations open in our area. Right now, the Park North location is open and the Stone Oak Theater will open in June. Time is just about 909, 67 degrees out. Well, the show must go on. Still ahead on GMSA, we're catching up with some of the dancers with the Children's Ballet of San Antonio as they prepare to perform live once again.
Plus, keeping your dog safe after these heavy rains here in San Antonio, what you should do if you think your dog might have eaten a poisonous mushroom. We're gonna explain. Uh-oh. All right, 67 degrees outside. It's, it's been a rainy last 48 hours. Will this continue? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. This rainy weather, it's great for grass and plants and flowers, but it also leads to an increase of mushrooms on the ground. Yeah, I've seen some in my yard. However, you need to be careful when taking your dogs out for a walk. Some of the mushrooms found along green belts and paths after recent rains in San Antonio could be poisonous. Mushroom poisoning is a common hazard for dogs because of the amount of time they spend outdoors or in wooded areas. Symptoms of poisoning includes vomiting, diarrhea, weakness, and seizures. So if you see your pet ingest a mushroom, try to salvage a piece of it, take it to the vet with you. If you have any future issues, it could help in determining whether or not that mushroom is poisonous and we just alluded to it. We've seen rain over the last couple days. Yes. So Sarah Spivey, will it continue? Yes, it will. That is a for sure thing. It'll continue, especially as we head into the lunch hour here in San Antonio. We're going to see the rain increase and that could potentially lead to flash flooding. The reason the ground is totally saturated. Look at these uh, rainfall totals since Wednesday. We've seen almost five and a half inches of rain at the airport, almost six in Lotus, six and a half Leon Valley area. And of course, we know Leon Valley tends to flood quite a bit. Uh, even just yesterday, the southeastern portion of Bear County up into Guadalupe County, that was the bullseye for rain yesterday. Seguin, five inches of rain, almost two and a half in Floresville, uh, more than four and a half in Castroville, two and a half at Medina lake and two and a quarter in Bernie. Now right now at the moment in Bear County, we are seeing a break from the rain apart from the extreme northwestern section of Bear County. So if you are somebody who wants to vote today in the city's elections, I would say now is the time to do it because again, around lunch and into the early afternoon, that's when we're really going to see our rain chances uh, pick up. Uh, speaking of picking up the rain chances, Areas near Bernie, you are going to see some pretty heavy rain here very shortly. So let's take a trip up to northwestern Bear County, right where Bandera and Kendall County meet. You can see that this has this storm has a few flashes of lightning with it. So if you live in Bernie, even if you live in the Fair Oaks Ranch area down toward the rim, you look to the west, you see the lightning and you hear the thunder. Bernie, this is right on your doorstep, and I do believe that there could potentially be some small hail with this system that's approaching. In fact, I'll go ahead and sample this purple area here and it probably should say about half an inch hail in diameter. Yes, I would say even smaller than that. So P to penny sized hail possible. Uh, with this storm that is approaching uh, the Bernie area here just within the next, I would say, uh, five minutes or so. So back to the radar we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom out quite a bit so that way you can see the system as a whole uh, moving to the northeast here. Kerrville getting a good chunk of rain as well. Let's go ahead and move to the west and sample the radar out there uh, in Del Rio closer to these storms. This is our next round of rain that's coming toward the San Antonio area uh, out toward Uvalde and Hondo as well well uh, and this is the potential for some really heavy rainfall here so we'll be watching that carefully as it gets closer again I think closer to uh, the lunch hour is when we could see some of that heavier rain uh, in Bear County that could potentially lead to flash flooding why all the rain we've got this big stubborn upper level low that just has not moved but good news today it is going to move to the east and with it will go our rain chances but we do have to get through the day today uh, again right at around noon and into the early afternoon we could see uh, some issues with some flash flooding, uh, not only here in Bear County, but across uh, most of the KSAT 12 viewing area. By dinner, though, that rain will be a lot more isolated. So voting today, go now or just wait until the later half of the afternoon uh, before the polls close at 7. Then by about midnight, again, rain should be very sparse by then. So just a reminder, flash flood watch for all of these counties in green. It does include Kerr and Bandera County in the Hill Country until 7 p.m. tonight. We are watching out for the potential for flash flooding. 60% chance for scattered showers in San Antonio at 10. Around noon, 80% chance for storms. Temperatures will only be in the 60s and 70s 
70s today because of the extra rain and cloud cover. If you are somebody who wants to enjoy your weekend outdoors, tomorrow is your day. We are going to be able to salvage some of the weekend. High temperature of 88 with gradually clearing skies. Keeping an eye on the radar for you all morning long and on the KSAT Weather Authority app. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 917, 67 degrees out. Well, still ahead, an Alabama teacher goes viral for making... Aww. For going out of his way for making students smile details on what has made Paul Parker unique for decades. And lots of hard work and practice finally going to show off for the San Antonio Ballet Dancers. Details on when they're going to finally perform live. We're going to explain next. Welcome back. For over a year, the pandemic has taken a toll on the arts, especially the performing arts. It's put a halt on so many theater and so many live performances, but with vaccines and COVID protocols, the Children's Ballet of San Antonio is excited to perform back on stage. You really are. I met with those dancers and spoke with them about their return in front of a live audience at the Topin Center for the Performing Arts. Nice. Keep pointing your feet. Keep breathing. So much repetition and attention to detail is put into rehearsing every move for performance. Make sure that you're elongating, reach, 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 quarter. It's why when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, it was such a blow to performance artists like the dancers with the Children's Ballet of San Antonio. And a lot of these dancers were, think, were wondering when they were going to be able to dance again, not just on the, in the studios, but on the big stage. You need to make sure that you're pushing forward, keeping shoulders to shoulders. The artistic director and founder of the Children's Ballet of San Antonio, Vanessa Bessler, says last March, everything came to a halt for their dancers learning to train over Zoom, and then learning to socially distance on the floor and dance with a mask on. At first, it was pretty difficult to breathe with a mask, but I think once you get used to it, it becomes a lot easier. And I think it's also important in ballet because it helps you build up your stamina. After over a year of having to practice virtually, then transition and performing virtually, the dancers will be finally back in front of a live audience on stage. The Children's Ballet of San Antonio will be performing Swan Lake at the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts May 21st and 22nd. Dancers ages 3 to 21 will finally be able to showcase all their hard work and hours nice. they have put into their art. In the studio, you teach them to dance, you teach them technique, but it's only on a stage where they become artists. It's more of an artistic experience, and when you have a camera in front of you, um, you can take multiple takes and redo it, but when it's live, it's one shot, and it's definitely more fun. More fun, not just for the audience to get back in those theater seats, but more importantly, for these young dancers. I hope that we can go back to normal and continue to do our seasonal performances because I really enjoy doing them and I love the experience. Again, they'll be at the Tobin uh, Center for the Performing Arts, May 21st and 22nd. They're very excited to be in front of a live audience and you can go to kset.com to find out how to buy those tickets. All right, time now, 923, 67 degrees out. An Alabama teacher goes viral for how he celebrated his 83rd Aww. birthday this week. Look at him go. We'll have a look <laughs> after the break. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. We are finishing off this half hour with some good news, something to make you smile. This morning we were telling you about a teacher at Muscle Shoals High School in Alabama. His He's famous on social media for his dance moves, but to his students, he's just known as Mr. Parker. So Paul Park Parker has been teaching at the school since 1974. Aww. He technically retired in 1997, <laughs> but still serves as a substitute. So when he isn't teaching, Mr. Parker, look at your screen, entertains his students with these signature dance moves, something he went viral for months ago. Parker broke out those moves to celebrate his 83rd birthday this week. I mean, he could go viral on TikTok. Yeah. He's already got better dance moves than me. Absolutely. Bon. Okay, that was <laughs> 927, 67 degrees out. Well, coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, families fight to get the benefits they deserve. Details on a bill the state legislature is working on to make qualifying for benefits and compensation easier. Plus, a big update on the Vanessa Guillen investigation. What Army officials are saying about her murder and what comes next? Good morning, welcome back. Happy Saturday and happy Election Day. 9.30 this morning, May 1st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. 
It's been a loud morning for a lot of folks. It's been loud. It's, you know, the last 48 hours. A lot of rain has fallen, Sarah Spivey, but this is much needed rain, so it's good. Absolutely. I mean, think about the fact that we go through those long summer months sometimes without seeing rain for a very long time. So we need to stock up on the rainfall and we really have over the last uh, about 48 hours or so. Now notice how in Bear County it's actually fairly quiet in Bear County right now. Not seeing much rain and we won't see much rain in Bear County uh, at least for the next hour and a half. So if you wanted to go vote uh, in San Antonio, I would do so now. Now there is obviously quite a bit of rainfall going on for our friends near the Bernie area right now as a thunderstorm works its way across I-10. Even in some of these purple areas, we could be seeing some small pea-sized hail. So we'll zoom in uh, between Bernie and Fair Oaks Ranch. Again, right there is where we've got some of uh, that heavier rainfall and potentially some pea sized hail. It's moving to the north and to the east. It might make it to Canyon Lake, uh, but it is actually probably going to skirt just to the west of the lake itself there. Speaking of the hill country, there's been quite a bit of good rainfall across the hill country this morning. While it's been relatively quiet this morning around Bear County, Kerrville has seen a lot of rain just within the neck within the last uh, I would say 12 hours or so. So let's go ahead and sample 12 hour rainfall and near Kerrville and in Kerr County you can see that they've seen about an inch of rain in just six hours. So we'll be monitoring those areas there. Uh, but we've got a lot more rain on the way here in San Antonio. Even though it's not raining right now in Bear County, we've got some more rain across uh, the uh, Rio Grande counties there that is going to be making its way to San Antonio and Bear County. So because of that, we do have that flash flood watch in effect through 7 p.m. The ground is saturated. Any very heavy rain that just stays there will lead to flash flooding. So today a rainy washout day, but tomorrow for the rest of the weekend looking good. A high temperature of 88. We'll talk about rainfall totals so far and I'll show you those storms out to our west in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Sarah Spivey. As we've been saying throughout the morning, it is election day here in San Antonio. We have all the information you need to know before you head to the polls. Depending on where you live, you may be voting in city, school district, water district, or special elections. For those that live within the city of San Antonio boundaries, you'll have mayor, all council seats, Prop A and Prop B on your ballot. That's right, Alicia Burra, join us live outside of Alliance Field, just off Broadway with more on where to vote and what you need to bring. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, it is indeed a very important day, and the good news right now, no rain, but also no lines, at least at Lions Field. It's been pretty slow, and the reality is that today, long, lane, long lines are not expected, but still, you want to be prepared. So here's what you want to take with you to the polls. That way you can cast your ballot. Of course, no rain right now, but it, it will be raining later. So you want to bring a raincoat or an umbrella. The polls open exactly at 7 a.m. and they'll remain open for the next 11 hours. So you have until 7 p.m. today. There's no excuse not to get here today. And all you really need to bring is a valid form of ID. That can be your driver's license, a Texas ID, a military ID, even a citizen certificate with a photo or your passport. But where exactly should you vote today? Well, if you're going to be running around town, taking care of some errands, maybe going out to eat, the good news is that you don't have to vote in your neighborhood or district. So whatever is more convenient for you, there are more than 240 voting centers across Bear County. So there are options. Local elections, of course, are extremely important. And remember, there are some very competitive matchups on the ballot this time around. But one thing that we do want to mention is, of course, there is a chance for things to go wrong, for things to slow down. That could be with uh, just the process to check in for voting, right? So when you're verifying your identity, that could be done manually if there's an issue with the systems. So be patient. Poll workers are trained to let you know what to do in case there is a holdup, like maybe going to check out a different polling site while they figure things out. But all the information you need, we have it on ksat.com forward slash vote underscore 2021. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. 
All right, thank you, Alicia. And if you don't have a ride to vote, don't worry. VIA has your back today. You can get free transportation. All you need is your voter registration card. The offer valid all day today for regular bus service and VIA Trans paratransit service. In VIA's service area, now registered VIA Trans customers can schedule their trip by phone or online. And like Alicia has been saying, if you have any questions about this or about anything going on with the election, we have all those answers. Just head to KSAT.com. Well, we continue our election coverage right here on KSAT at 7 p.m. with a live stream. Our Steve Spreetster will be joined by a panel of experts to discuss what's on the ballot and analyze those results live as they come in. You can tune in onto our website or KSAT TV streaming app and KSAT's Facebook page. Well, businesses in Hollywood Park are being helped after police officer caught a suspected catalytic converter thief in the act. Police say it happened Friday morning just around the police station along San Pedro Avenue. Officers say 30-year-old James Hasso was allegedly trying to steal a converter but denied he had any connection to the theft. He was arrested and charged with criminal mischief and evading arrest. Now, the Hollywood Park Police Department says it's going to be teaming up with the local garage to make it easier for stolen converters to be traced back to their owners or identify for their owners or identify as stolen. When you talk to the salvage yards and you're just being honest, you're saying, listen, what what is it that would deter you from buying it? I need to know because that's what I want to do. And this is a suggestion as well as look, you've got to give us something to tell us that doesn't belong to them. So we're going to spray paint it and we're going to put initials on it or, or whatever identifying we can. The police department will use high temperature spray paint and engrave the VIN numbers on work vehicles owned by businesses. They're primarily trying to help those businesses who leave their fleet parked in the parking lots at night and weekends. The program will be free to Hollywood Park businesses. Well, Metro Health is now offering even more opportunities for you to get the vaccine if you're still waiting for one and no appointments are needed. Monday, May 3rd, you can get a Pfizer vaccine at the New Life Christian Center off U.S. Highway 90 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or St. Henry Catholic Church off of South Florida Street is offering the one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Once again, you can just show up and you don't need an appointment. All right, now to the latest on the COVID numbers here at home in Bear County. At last report, 267 new cases of COVID. No more people have died in the last 24 hours, but there are people in the hospital. Our hospitalization rates, 230 people in our local hospital, 69 in the ICU, 44 on ventilators. In the vaccination front, 768,000 people have gotten at least one shot of the vaccine. And get this. More than 524,000 people locally fully vaccinated. Well, the latest this morning, family and friends of Bear County Sheriff's Deputy Timothy De La Fuente gathering to remember him a year after he died from COVID complications. On top of grieving, his wife Pauline says an unresolved issue with his benefits has made an already tough year even more difficult. He worked for Bear County Sheriff's Office for more than 27 years, but Pauline says she still hasn't received any of her late husband's benefits. We're not asking for a handout. We're asking just for the governor to do the right thing and uh, get these families, not just mine, but all the other families like mine, uh, the benefits they deserve. Pauline added that he, she has a workers' compensation claim out, and she says the state is asking her to prove De La Fuente contracted COVID-19 at work. She says she will continue fighting until all families get the benefits they deserve. Right now, the state legislature working on a bill that would designate COVID-19 as a line of duty illness, which would make it easier to qualify for benefits and compensation. Now to the latest on the Army's report on the investigation into the death of Vanessa Guillen. New reports finding she was sexually harassed by her supervisor. ABC's Eva Pilgrim tells us the new details about the soldier's murder. This morning, the Army facing new questions over the treatment of specialist Vanessa Guillen. More than a year following her disappearance and murder, the Army releasing their report confirming Guillen had been sexually harassed by a superior, as her family claimed all along. How is it possible for this to happen on a military base? How is it possible and no one heard anything? 
Officials stress that the harassment was not linked to her death, but the report shines a light on the overall treatment of Guillen by military officials, disclosing that the Army did not take appropriate action after the 20-year-old Guillen came forward about being harassed by a superior on two separate occasions. We as an Army failed to protect Specialist Guillen. Her mother recalling a conversation they had before she disappeared. A mí me está acosando sexualmente un sargento. Le dije, no, mija, es que eso no puede ser, mija. ¿Cómo a ese grado? Dijo, sí, mami, y se les anuncia una grimita así. According to investigators, this incident has no connection to her alleged killer, Specialist Aaron Robinson, and there is no credible evidence that he harassed her, but he had harassed someone else. The report also details that Robinson was able to initially escape custody due to poor communication between criminal investigators and soldiers. He then killed himself. So far, 21 soldiers have been disciplined, including some of the leaders in her brigade. Of course, none of this will bring Specialist Guillen back, but her memory drives us to be better. And that was Eva Pilgrim reporting. Time now is 941, 67 degrees out. Last night, the second night of the NFL draft, a lot of Texas teams making some big moves. Texans getting a quarterback and the Cowboys getting a few players. We're going to break it down. Plus, can you finish 13 pounds of ramen? Yes. Coming up next, we're catching up with one woman who took on the challenge and where you can as well. Is this intimidating to you at all? Have you, have you done something similar to this or on this level? I definitely done something similar, but just looking at the amount of meat that they have here today, it is kind of intimidating. That is a lot of food and a lot of noodles. Like, little, little under 13 pounds, right? Little under 13 pounds. Wow. Okay, it's still under 13 pounds. That is... I think she might be okay with that. The ramen bowl is slightly under 13 pounds, but still, come on. It's almost 13 pounds of ramen. That's still a huge feat. And the time frame to finish all this food? 30 minutes. Let's see if Raina can do it. We got a really good crowd here today, so I want you guys to give a countdown, and we will get started from 10, 9, nine 8, 8, 7, 7 6, 6, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Yeah, no, she finished that whole thing, 13 pounds. Spoiler. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Spoiler, we're going to see more rain today. Yeah. Too. Yeah, and it could lead to flash flooding in some areas. So let's get right down to the forecast. You know, from this entire rain event, so since Wednesday, we've seen just shy of five and a half inches of rain. That is so impressive. It brought our April rainfall total to a little bit more than six inches of rain. And on top of that, it helped us fill out the rain gauge for the year, too. So since January 1st, we've had just over nine inches of rainfall, most of that happening within the last 48 hours or so. In fact, that little bit of rain that we got, the lot bit of rain that we got, sent us above the average since January 1st. We're a bit, an inch above the average, and we'll take any kind of rain surplus that we can get just because we know those dry summer months are ahead. Now, outside right now, we are enjoying a brief break from the rain. It's cloudy at 67. It's very humid outside. And taking a quick check of the roads, if you want to plan to maybe go and vote, uh, the roads look pretty good right now. Now is the time to get out and vote because in just about an hour and a half or so, we're going to see rain start to pick up again, and that could lead to flash flooding. That's 35 at Evans there. So let's go ahead and talk about the radar. Uh, use our new little radar tools here. They're pretty awesome. Awesome. Again, a brief break in the rain here in San Antonio, but up across parts of the hill country, we're seeing some good healthy rainfall. That one storm that moved through Bernie that might have produced some pea sized hail has weakened as it's moved to the east, hugging that uh, Comal and Kendall County line. But once again, we're seeing some pretty good rain for areas uh, in the hill country out toward Comfort, Kerrville, Ingram, and even in Medina as well. So as I mentioned, there's a break from the rain right now here in San Antonio, but you look off to our west 
and you can really see another round of rain just right around the corner. So let's go ahead and take a trip out to our western counties uh, that our KSAT viewers out there. This is a good line of storms that's generally moving uh, to the north northeast. It's heading closer and closer to Uvalde at the moment and it's got plenty of lightning with it as well and maybe even embedded in there some pea sized hail too. So Crystal City getting some good rain as well. La Prior uh, getting some good rain. Uh, and Brackettville too. This is going to move to the north and to the east, making it to San Antonio again within the next hour and a half, two hours or so. And that's what could lead to some localized uh, flash flooding issues. And that's why we have that flash flood watch in effect until 7 p.m. today. An additional one to two inches of rain is possible widespread across these counties in green pockets of up to four inches possible as well. I do think that our biggest flash flooding issues were last night, but again, this is just we're just going to put everybody on alert for the lunch hour and onward for that potential for flash flooding. A wider view of our weather pattern here. This is a big upper level low that has been stubborn. It's just been hanging out to our west, and that's why we've seen round after round of rainfall. But today this is going to move on off to the east and take the rain chances with it. We just got to get through the rest of the day here. So this is right about now uh, that line there and then between about noon and and 4 p.m. I think that we could have some good uh, thunderstorms again here in San Antonio, potentially some small hail, but we're mainly concerned about uh, flash flooding uh, more than anything with this round that's going to be moving through. Then by dinner, things are going to become a little bit more isolated into the evening, becoming very isolated by midnight. We'll probably be done with the rain as a whole and starting the day tomorrow. Some fog 61 degrees, but we will see the sun tomorrow in the words of Annie. The sun will come out tomorrow. 88 degrees for the high temperature tomorrow. For the rest of the day, though, today we're going to be socked into cloud cover with showers and storms, potentially some flash flooding as well. And then looking ahead to the week, uh, we'll be seeing another front move through, but this one will only bring isolated rain. By the way, if you do get a flash flood warning, the advice is to stay indoors if you can and also to avoid those uh, low water crossings that typically happen in the area. We'll keep you updated on KSAT.com and the weather app as well. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 9.50, 67 degrees out. Big night for a lot of young men, a lot of football fans. Second night of the NFL draft. We're going to have all the latest that you need to know, Cowboys and Texans. Take a look at the pick three lottery numbers, nine, five, three, fireball, eight, daily, four, zero, five, six, five, fireball, zero, cash, five, two, three, seven, 31, 32. And Mega Millions, eight, 19, 26, 48, 49, big number five, Mega Fire three. Good luck. We'll be right back. But first, we're going to take a live look out of the Alamo City, 67 degrees. We can't see any rain right there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, what we can expect for the rest of the day. Football Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. It is NFL Draft Weekend. Time to talk some football. The Dallas Cowboys number one pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Linebacker Micah Parsons. He and his family are arriving at the start in Frisco. Parsons playing at linebacker U. That is Penn State Happy Valley for two seasons. For Parsons, it is a dream come true. Even though his family from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, he says to be Cowboy is a lifelong dream. Cowboys far from done in the first round. They stuck with improving their defense, kicking off the second round, selecting Kentucky cornerback Kelvin jo Joseph. Joseph actually played at both LSU and Kentucky, and he's really, really fast, as you can see right there. He ran a 4-3-4. Dallas Cowboys picking Osa Adigazua from UCLA. Defensive end Chauncey Golson from Big Ten's Iowa, and Nashawn Wright from Oregon. We are far from done, though. We got the other Texas team, Houston Texans. They had just one pick in the third round, 67 overall, and they used that pick to pick a quarterback. Stanford's Davis Mills with all the uncertainty surrounding Deshaun Watson, who is facing 22 civil lawsuits. The Texans using their first pick in the draft on a quarterback. Time to talk about our local talent. Congratulations to Smiths and Valleys and TCU's Trayvon Merrick, who was selected in the second round by the Las Vegas Raiders, 43rd overall pick. Impressive stats, winning the Jim Thorpe Award as the nation's best defensive back, and a name we all know very well, former Reagan and Aggie quarterback Kellen Mond. 
led Texas A&M to a 9-1 record, fourth in the nation, drafted in third round by Minnesota Vikings, 66 overall. So good luck to all these young men who now have a life-changing events, and good luck to all the teams and fans. Congrats to our local guys. Yeah, absolutely. 956, about 67 degrees. More than 8 out of 10 young Americans are concerned about the health of the planet. Tomorrow on GMSA, why experts say Gen Z fears environmental damage and ecological disasters. And the news you need to know before you go, polling sites around San Antonio will be open until 7 o'clock tonight. You need to be at least 18 years old to vote and bring a valid form of ID. We have a full list of locations as well as a sample ballot right now on KSET.com. United Way of San Antonio Bear County has a mission to unite the community and identify and solve our most critical issues. That is why tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Chris Martin, the CEO, joining us live to talk about those issues. You can submit any questions or concerns you have right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. And even though it's relatively quiet in San Antonio right now, we do have a flash flood watch until 7 p.m. More storms are on the way, especially after lunch. So be on alert then for flash flood warning. Tomorrow, though, we're going to be seeing skies clear and it'll be a beautiful day. High temperature near 88 tomorrow. So the sun, it's going to shine tomorrow. And we'll end this long streak of rain. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Stay with us online and on air. Weather, elections, news. Still